Welcome back to the Good Morning Niger Show. Now, earlier in the show, we had looked at our newspaper headlines and seen how much damage the whole COVID-19 season has cost the tourism sector, travel agencies. News reports that the airlines have been shut for further four weeks. How are the travel agencies handling this? What and what can be done in this season to ensure that they look after themselves and pre prepare for life post-COVID? Today, we're joined by Cecil Mambo, who is the CEO of CMD Tours, specializing in organizing farm trips as well as group trips. And today, she's going to share with us what exactly COVID-19 has done to the tourism sector, speaking on behalf of the Nigerian tourism um, industry. Hello, Cecil. Thank you for joining us. Hello, Liv. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. So, Cecil, from, you know, speaking on behalf of all the tourism agencies or most of the tourism agencies in Nigeria, give us a physical, you know, a pictorial breakdown of how exactly COVID-19 has affected the tourism industry. Okay, like, like you mentioned earlier, uh, airports are locked down. Mm -hmm. Countries have closed their borders. So, there is no activity and internally as well. We, we are experiencing a lockdown, so no activity. Everything is on short, on lockdown. Mm -hmm. No, everything is closed, so we don't, we can't sell packages. We can't sell flight tickets. We are asked to stay at home. Mm -hmm. There is absolutely no activity. It's not like a food sector where you can still do, sell uh, food, do delivery. It's not possible. We can't have activity unless now we, we are we are thinking out of the box and we know that in most cases there have been cases where people have paid for travel plans and travel packages and all of a sudden covid-19 appears and the lockdown order has come so a lot of you have gotten this money have there been situations that have happened to you personally where people have paid for their flights yes. or made reservations and asked for a refund and have you all been able to handle it Oh, oh, yes, that, that has happened to CMD tours as well, because we have a lot of bulk buying companies, organization buy ticket, and then uh, they want a refund, and a lot of airlines are not refunding right now. So uh, there is that um, conversation has started with IATA, a travel agent body. Nanta is also pushing the discussion. It was on the news some few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. we, we, the, the travel industry has lost close to 80 billion naira. So we, we are trying to get some airlines. Some airlines are actually accepted to make a refund, right? but not all of them. So we are now pleading with, um, we have to plead with customers to hold on. And uh, we, are, we are going to see how it will unfold the coming days. So, um, speaking about this refund uh, situation, is uh, do you, is there like any um, contract that uh, binds the the customer and the, uh, the 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 airlines that okay, in case situations like this come up, I have the uh, the opportunity to act. I can ask for a refund and it will be given back to me. Or because you you made it clear that you now have to beg the airlines to make these refunds. Is there no um, a legal agreement or legal backing that has the customer been able to ask for ref refund from the airline? The, the technicality, what, what is happening when you, you, you issue a ticket yes. and you are an IATA license, mm -hmm. you have two weeks to okay. pay to remit. We call it remittance. Mm -hmm. So in two weeks, you have already paid. IATA has collected their money. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Later on, because of the COVID, nobody can travel. Yes. And the customer is asking for a refund. Mm -hmm. I have to have already collected it. So it's it's a new thing. COVID, we have never experienced COVID before. So mm -hmm. it's a it's a new experience for each stakeholder. So mm -hmm. we are trying to see how we can adapt in the best way mm -hmm. possible. Mm -hmm. All right. So um Cecile, before COVID-19, the tourism industry was one that was, you know, beginning to really flourish. We're seeing lots more people traveling. I mean, you and a lot of other people would go on familiarization trips in other countries. Let's talk about um, what the tourism industry was like before COVID-19 and what you think it might become after COVID-19. Uh, the, the, the tourism industry was really booming, like you said. It was flourishing. People like 
to it, it wasn't a, an essential need to travel but it was becoming people were beginning to understand that traveling is part of education mm. it's part where you travel for business you travel for health you travel so it, it was really booming but uh, with covid it's it's a lot of changes it's a lot of from um, uh, the tourism cannot be like it was it way before mm. it can't it can't mm. we it will take a long time to 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 get back i'm not even sure it can get back to that to to the place it was before but mm. the good things about it if there is any good thing if we can say it like that the good thing about the, the this whole covid pandemic experience is that i personally feel uh, our domestic tourism and uh, Africa tourism will be in the boom. A lot of people won't want, Africa has managed, as in a certain extent, has managed the pandemic much better than some European country or America. Mm -hmm. That will, uh, people will, when borders open, people will look forward to going to Africa. They will feel more secure psychologically and I think that that's maybe the only, if in quote, I can say that's the only good thing that the COVID could have done to us. Because before then, we don't used to travel a lot in Africa or even within Nigeria. Mm. Domestic travel was nowhere to, to be on the table. Mm. A lot of a domestic a lot of tour operators were not even selling Nigeria. We have very few tour operators that were selling Nigeria as a tourist destination. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's uh, let's see. Now the the COVID nineteen pandemic has come. A lot of things have changed, and a lot of businesses or industries mm -hmm. are looking for new ways uh, to evolve in staying afloat. Mm -hmm. Because, like you said, nobody is traveling, nobody's um, uh, booking flights to you know for for tourism or all this anymore. So, for your industry, what would you say are the measures that you um, the industry is looking to evolve to? Because at least the business has to go on. So what's the next step? How are you looking to evolve with this current situation? For every travel agency now, we need to see, we need to begin to think out of the box. We need to also move to the virtual space. Mm. Like, okay. um, yeah, you can think about, as an agency, you can think about organizing virtual, uh, you can think about organizing virtual tours. Mm. I, I saw a travel agency advertising that, and I was like, that's a great idea. You can think about um, doing, like CMD, for instance, is having an upcoming virtual conference. Okay. Because MICE will, uh, conference and incentive, it, it won't happen. A lot of gathering, mm -hmm. it won't happen. Um, it, it won't. Mm -hmm. It won't happen very soon. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you need to to think how you can move your business to the virtual space mm. you need to begin to think how you can move it online mm. and that's for me that's the best thing the best way to to stay afloat because a lot of agency also um didn't completely suck their staff they then kept them and they gave a 50 percent salary so you have to Think about how you can pay those staff, how you can make some income. Mm -hmm. And so you you need you really need to to begin. Everything is happening is happening on the virtual form now. And I, I feel maybe for a lot of us also is a time to train ourselves. It is a time to invest in our self development so that we we can face the pandemic and we we can adapt our business and position our businesses to the new. The new norm, if mm. we can say it like that, the new norm. Yeah. Now, to mm. sometimes combat the madness that exists on the outside, you have to look on the inside. And when you were speaking at some point, you mentioned how most tour operators hardly sell Nigeria and they own or Africa. They're always selling Europe or some other countries or some other continent. How important do you think it is for Nigerians at this point? to start looking, and to operators within Nigeria, to start looking within. And I'm asking this because there are many Nigerians who have never been, and I'm not just saying many Nigerians, including myself, who have never been to certain very key parts of the country. It's unfortunate to see that we have tourism destinations like the Kogozi Warm Springs, to see that we have the Erita Waterfalls, to see that we have all these hills and mountains and caves that many of us have not explored. 
but we're very quick to run out of the country once we have the slightest opportunity. How important do you think it is for us to look within in this time and how viable do you think this will be as a business opportunity in the nearest future? Uh, you, you are not the only person, you are not the only person guilty of it. We have a whole lot of people that do not even know the next state mm. close to them. And, and uh, for me, it's, um, this is the time, really, because where would you go? But you need to go out. You need to, to, to move. You, you need to do new, to, to see new things. Even, even if you, you look at it from one state to another state, is a different culture, is even a different way of thinking. And most, mostly we travel for those things. We travel to, to see different culture, to see, to, to get exposed to different way of doing things. So now, come back to domestic travel. We, we don't have a lot of choice. We just have to see how we can repackage our domestic tourism and sell it. And funny enough, it's, it's amazing, but it creates more, it will bring back, it creates value in our economy. Mm. It brings back money. It creates a job for a tour guide somewhere in Nigeria. Uh, it boosts our sales in hotel. It boosts, I think, the, it, it puts food on a family table. Mm. So it's, it's more interesting it's more economically powerful for us to sell nigeria as a as, as a destination right hmm. right amazing thank you so much cecil you know i totally agree with what you have said i remember going to badagri slave trade and i was you know the, the slave trade museum and i was so amazed and wowed you know with the tourists the tour guide and yes that's a way for us to look within and make income for ourselves final words of advice and words of encouragement to all your fellow tour operators and everyone who's within the tourism space and currently feeling the heat and the impact of COVID-19? Uh, I, I will say it will pass. It will pass. It, it, it will pass, definitely. It might not be the way it used to be, but it's, it's, a, it's a way also to help us redefine and rebrand ourselves, rebrand our companies, uh, you, we use this few, there are a lot of webinar out there. There is a lot of training, free training. So we can actually use this period to train mm -hmm. ourselves and bring in new products or to bring in new way of doing things. Because I, I think mainly that's what the pandemic did in, in a lot of businesses is it pushed us to reinvent ourselves to bring a new us, things we didn't think we could do before, we can do now. A lot of company can push training online and sell them touristic, touristic, uh, tourism related topic. And uh, we can do webinar, we can do virtual tour. We can even start creating food tour when we're talking about um, Nigerian domestic tour. We, we can create food tour. Mm. That, that's a package that we sell because every state have different culinary culture okay, yes you know yes. Yeah. yeah so those are products we can now push to 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 the push in the market we, we we can just for me it's just a way to reinvent ourselves Indeed and really is. not kill you makes you better yeah true. that is a true. final <laughs> you know, nail on the head whatever doesn't kill you makes, makes you, you stronger, better yes. thank you so much cecil for sharing these words with us and spending your time with us on the good morning niger show Thank you. We've been speaking with Cecil Mambo, the CEO of CMD Tours, and she shared with us how the tourism space has been grossly impacted by COVID-19 and what we can do to better prepare ourselves. I really like the suggestions. A lot of the suggestions are things that cannot be implemented now because, of course, there's an interstate travel ban. However, these are things that can be implemented going forward in the coming future when this ban is lifted and when we're able to have won the fight against COVID-19. So that means you must start to prepare and start to prepare now. Yep. Okay, we'll go on a break. We have our next guest standing by. Do we want to tell them who that is? Yes, our next guest, as I said before, we have Chiago Zim Wankama. She's an actress in Nigeria, a uh, very talented actress. And we're going to be talking to her about uh, the, you know, the acting space, how COVID has affected that uh, era. But when we come back, so stay with us.